The following is an Outdoor Channel original production. All the students are going to have problems. Jans. Sir. Are you okay or are you still hurt? Oh, I'm hurt pretty bad here, yo. Hurting meaning you can't make it anymore? I can make it, I think. You can have bears, you can have wolves, you can have rattlesnakes. Whoa, there's a rattle. Rattlesnake, guys. Rattlesnake! So we have bear sign 100 yards below camp. We've got bear scat 50 feet above camp. You need to let the other guys know that you found bear sign below camp. If that happens, the guide has to know what to do to handle the situation. My name is Tim Dowd. I've been a professional guide and outfitter for over 30 years. I know what it takes to get it done in America's roughest mountain. I get my clients within spitting distance of stunning big bull elk and monster black bears. Each year, I invite students from around the world into mine. They all say they want to learn what I know. Outfitting is one of the most demanding jobs in the world. 20-hour workday is normal, and only the toughest have what it takes. They are mine for a month, my ranch, my rules. I will find out who's tough enough. You never know what's going to happen, but I guarantee they'll never forget Outfitter Boot Camp. When we packed into camp, we needed to make two trips to get all the supplies in. Everybody came in the first trip. The students got together as a group, and they chose who was going to stay in camp and who was going to make the second trip. I'm real comfortable staying and organizing everything. And I can also clear the limb for the saddles. Jan should stay. There's no reason for him to walk okay. up that trail again. So the students have made a plan where um, Jana and Jance will stay in camp and start constructing the camp. The other four will go back to the trailhead, pick up the rest of the supplies. And my only concern is if there is a true leader here left at camp between Jance and Jana, Jance is half of a person right now because he's injured and Jana is not full strength um, just because she is physically not strong. So we'll find out when we come back if a lot of things have been done or just little time-consuming stuff has been done. I grew up in the country, spending every minute of my spare time outdoors, and it all came so naturally. The outdoors is very important to me, because, I mean, if it wasn't for the outdoors, I would probably be in jail. Because I just, as long as I spend time in the outdoors, I can't get in trouble. Janice seems to be doing great, and she's really helpful. She's always right there with all the guys, so. Four of us had to go back down and get um, eight more mules. So I decided to stay back here. I just think I'm more of a benefit being at the campsite. We're getting a lot of work done. We've got the saddle bar all set to go, cleaning out the fi fire pit. We're cutting firewood. We've got some of the gear organized. What I'm looking for when I get back, are they just kind of screwing around till Tim gets back? Do they realize that we don't eat until the fire gets done, the wood gets done, and the tents get up? I'm here because I enjoy the outdoors. Um, I've spent most of my life hunting and fishing, and I'm here looking to further my skills and hopefully pursue a career in the guiding field. I think it was easier. We knew what to expect. and kind of have the flow down. The biggest thing is I've been up there. I know the country. Um, I know the, you know, that I've never been in Bliss Creek, but I know the surrounding area. Um, I've been in grizzly country a lot. I camped in grizzly country. I've helped an outfitter pack out his camp. Um, so I guess I kind of know just kind of stuff to do and not to do. Next thing we're going to do is unload everything you see here on all these animals. That's what we're going to work on now. Get that done and then get camp set up. The reason why I chose this path, I guess, for my career, um, is I like the freedom. I like not being secluded to inside. The animals are tired. Um, Rooster didn't want to keep up the pace, so it was like the Chinese torture getting stretched out by one going this way and one going this way. 
I've been hunting with my family since I was in a, in a booster seat. After that, I hunt whatever I could and spend as much time in the outdoors as I could. First thing we have to do is, after we unload, we gotta get the animals taken care of, unsaddled, and then we have to assess what's done and what has to be done yet before we're good to go this evening. Okay, so people that was here, what's done and what's yet to be done? We should probably start getting the tents up because they're like three different tents. Seems to be only two people that care. So you guys gonna make the decision for the group? Well, Since yeah. nobody else is talking, I guess you are. We'll get tents up first so we can start putting our gear in the tents. So I say we get the poles, get the tents up. Maybe two people go start using uh, the lash ropes over this tree here and we can start hanging food. I've never made a tent like this, but I will find out how here shortly. One of the big things that the students have to learn is when they're in the high country, they have absolutely no one that can help them out. They're on their own. So Jance, grab a steak and growl, start pounding. Let's get them up. I don't know about you guys, but I wouldn't mind supper. There's definitely some predators around because that hillside's scattered with fur, probably bear. We were looking for something to stir the chili with, like cauldron. <laughs> it's bear country here, not just black bear, but grizzly. You need to let the other guys know that you found bear sign below camp. All that food needs to be up. Outfitter Boot Camp, presented by Pelican is brought to you in part by Valero, keeping America moving. By Sedlock, carbon alloy is making you and Sedlock the deadliest combination. Go RVing, find your way. Visit GoRVing.com. And by Cabela's, the world's foremost outfitter. Just a few days ago, a man was mauled and killed in Yellowstone. We are not far from Yellowstone here. Do you see this down here, Tim? What's that? A bear is going to have claw marks. Do you see claw marks? Yeah. Where? Point them out. That looks like claw marks to me. Going there and there. You guys have now found more bear sign. So the first thing we need to do, we better not leave food down. We better be bear proof and bear safe at this camp or we're gonna have a bear in it because right now they're all around it. So go relay what you found to the rest of the guys so we can have a safe camp. All right, we have got, found more bear sign like maybe a hundred yards from camp. And how far by the, close to the food? And it's like 50 yards from the food. Might want to go ahead and hang the food up just okay. to be on the safe side. Yeah. We might want to go. We better hang the food up to be safe. Okay. So let's go hang all our stuff up. Sounds good. Because we've got now we've got bear sign on both sides of camp. That's our warning. So if a bear comes in and gets our food, we can't say we didn't know nothing about it. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> as much as I do. Ready? Yep. One, two, three. See how it's rocking and rolling? Yeah. One, two, three. That'd be it. That's it. Okay. These students may have hunted their whole lives, but now they find out it's not about them anymore, it's about the client. You guys are guiding a client in October. What's the weather in October? Could be like in the 40s, 50s, at night below freezing, probably up in the mountains. You are now stuck on the mountain, where you have to spend the night on the mountain. You can use anything in your pack, only what's in your pack. Everybody makes their own individual emergency shelter. You have an hour and a half maximum time, and your time starts right now. Stay within sight distance of everyone else. The key is to build a shelter that a guide and a client can survive for one night. In the Marines, we learned quite a bit of this. The biggest thing is just keeping your cool. 
Um, using your head, don't overuse your energy. I think that if you're gonna be sleeping, you can lay under that and be perfectly warm, I think. The emergency shelter exercise was probably, has been my favorite so far. I've always kind of loved to build forts, even as a kid. Yeah, this is the cheapo uh, space blanket. It's what I would wrap up in. My space blanket tarp is in the tent right now. Uh, typically, that's in my pack all the time, but I was trying to make a nice floor for my bunk mate. He doesn't like bugs. With my shelter, fire always makes somebody feel better, and warmth always makes somebody feel better. Even if they're getting a little windy or it's a little tight cramped, as long as they're warm, then you're doing good. In order to build an efficient shelter, you must have with you plenty of cord or string to tie poles, lash branches, etc. cetera. Um, a space blanket or tarp is great where it can be used as a roof. And as always, you must have something to start a fire with. I've been stuck in the outdoors before, unexpectedly due to weather or being too far from the vehicle to hike out at night and having down game. Okay, time's up. Everybody over here. Well, my shelter just pretty well wasn't durable. I didn't have really any clue on what to do. Okay, time's up. Everybody over here. Well, my shelter just pretty well wasn't durable. I didn't have really any clue on what to do. Time's up, let's go. Okay. We're gonna go through each one and look at them and see what everybody likes, what they don't like, et cetera, et cetera. So this is mine. Um, Pick the location because I had two good trees to be able to build my support system before layering on my branches to give me my insulating layer and block out all the elements. And uh, I think I'm pretty well protected from the elements. What do you think? I think, I think it looks, looks great. I think it looks really good. I guess one thing is you are kind of on the edge of the trees. Yeah, you'd be There's losing what? a lot of heat. OK, so lay down like your client would be. You don't have to get in it, but. <laughs> it's pretty nice. OK, next one. Everyone has already been instructed the first two weeks what to carry. So we'll see who got what supplies and who can build a shelter. Okay. So can I explain this is yep. what my reasoning was? So I put up this thing and I'm glad I did because I've had this thing in my backpack for two years and I've never used it. And I guess I'm disappointed with how sturdy it is. The back right is already stretching. How are you sleeping? Where's your body position? Um, well, you know, until, well, you, when you're sleeping, probably, uh, like this way, you know, two people, like one here mm -hmm. and one here. Okay, so a big wind. It's gone. Yeah. Yep. Or but a big snow. That's, that's why you guys are doing these here now. Next one. My emergency shelter was very simple, um, but effective. All right, this is my shelter. It's really simple. Um, because in survival situations, you want to save as much energy as possible. I chose this spot because there's a nature trail right off the side. So I left the orange side facing that direction. Put wind breaks on both sides, using natural green limbs that won't burn, and using other green limbs off the trees to kind of support it. I'd put in a lengthwise fire here and to build a nice coal set so it would radiate the heat back down into that area. And then I could just climb in here. <laughs> and two of us go night night. Come on, little buddy. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be friendly by the end of the yeah. night. Questions, comments? OK, next one. My whole idea is this is something to hunker down in and get warm. We go in here, shut the door, and go to bed. Where's the doorbell, okay. MacGyver? Go ahead. So. 
It's not a laying flat bed. It's uh, your chair in the car, recline back. Any other questions or comments? I guess I'm a little, I'm curious about if it, if it is gonna snow or rain and you're gonna have moisture, is it gonna kind of come in as a, because you're on not a flat surface? You're gonna have pluses and minus with all of them. Mm -hmm. This one may be a concern if you have high winds because of the hillside. Yeah. With these on the flat, wouldn't be. Okay, next. Okay, what do we have? <clears throat> um, well, I right away saw the rock and I thought it's gonna instantly shelter us from the elements. I dug it out a little bit, enough for two people, but I still wanted it small with a low ceiling to keep in heat. Me and uh, my hunter or guide <laughs> would be up under here under the emergency blanket. It folds out pretty big. It does fold out pretty big. And uh, there's a trench dug right up here. In case water were to come in, it would just trickle out the side. But I think it's really blocked by this nice rock. Questions, comments? I was eyeballing this too, but she beat me to it, so. <laughs> <laughs> My shelter just pretty well wasn't durable. I didn't have really any clue on what to do. The key is to build a shelter that a guide and a client can survive in for one night. Okay, Jance, explain your shelter. All right. I had this kind of rigged up so that I thought it was like enough woods between here and the field that it would kind of block some of the wind. And I got under a big tree so it might block a little bit of the snow. And put your fire here and you just put your feet down there and just kind of stay right in here and stay warm. Okay, so you're gonna be, you and your client are gonna be where? Sit or lay in there like you would be? Lay in there? Yeah, like you're gonna spend the night. Ah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I'll be damned. <laughs> I mean, I knew, you know, ah, put it up and it'll be fine. Uh, the shelter, I don't think, that I think wouldn't hold up very well to anything would be Jance's. Um, unfortunately, he comes from an area where it's, and he's young too, so he's never been in a situation or had probably any proper training on it. Um, but coming from South, you know, or North Florida, or anywhere in Florida, it's 70 degrees almost 10 months out of the year. So they really don't worry about it that much. <laughs> Whoa, there's a rattle. rattlesnake. Guys. Rattlesnake, right alongside the trail there. I feel like more like we're on Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> Outfitter Boot Camp, presented by Pelican, is brought to you in part by Valero, keeping America moving. By Sedlock, carbon alloy is making you and Sedlock the deadliest combination. Go RVing, find your way. Visit GoRVing.com and by Cabela's, the world's foremost outfitter. There's a rattlesnake. rattlesnake right alongside the trail there. If you have a situation where you have a rattlesnake in camp, then you need to take care of the rattlesnake. The worst thing that can happen with a rattlesnake, of course, is a horse or mule or a person being bit. If someone is bitten by a rattlesnake, you have to act quickly because of the fact that the rattlesnake has poison and poison will be going through the body of the human. Well, we found a rattlesnake, as you can see. They're poisonous, so they can kill you. And it's not good to have around camp. Blackie, Blackie, get back here. Blackie, get back here. That's the big thing. This close to camp, we really don't want them this close to camp. For us or for Blackie or the plan with the snake is Tyson is going to make a hat band, and they're going to cook it up for supper. Game over. Rattlesnakes taste pretty good. I think they just taste like chicken, actually. I skinned a few rattlesnakes. This one just shed its skin. It's uh, that's why it's so green. Usually they'll be more of a white and black. But yeah, they look pretty cool right after they shed. They're a really pretty green tone.
There's our food. And here's the new hat band. Who's here, who here has eaten rattlesnake before? I have, it didn't look I like have. that. I have, it didn't look like that either. It was, we cut it up into a bunch of little pieces, so it was easier. It smells good. You like chicken? Tough as hell. It's tasty. Mm -hmm. It does have good flavor. Feel like more like we're on Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because you're eating rattlesnake after you've had cheeseburgers? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So here's my take this week. Jana, she's definitely in her element now. Shane saw bear sign and he warned everybody. Jance with that shelter, what the heck was he thinking? <laughs> Jason, come on little buddy. <laughs> but it looked like everybody really enjoyed the rattlesnake. My dad has, usually has hearing aids, but he always takes them out when he hunts because he doesn't want to shoot the gun with hearing aids in. So I'm walking behind him and I see this buck, a legal mule deer, and I'm like, dad, dad, and he just keeps walking. <laughs> and so I was, I was hitting him with a bunch of rocks and finally he turns around and he's like, what? Like really? <laughs> I was like, never mind.